want to keep anybody if they plan to go to the budget hearing afterwards. <laughs> Uh, I'm Patty Furr, and I'm the Executive Director of the Hancock County Library System, and I am just absolutely delighted to see a packed room tonight. This is great. And uh, this whole idea of having a program was uh, one that Mary Perkins and I percolated in our brains because we think it's important for people to know the history of Waveland. We think it's so important that we want to have a Waveland Memory Month every single year in April. April is a wonderful time of rebirth, and I am predicting we're going to have a lot of new residents in Waveland because I live here and I love it, and I know a lot of people are going to discover the secret of living in Waveland. So I figure these people can benefit from hearing some of the memories that we have of Waveland. And I would very much next year like to have a historical photograph uh, exhibit so people could bring in their pictures of Waveland and I would like to see us commit to and I will commit to you that we will have a Photoshop computer here in the library and some sort of project where we can say bring in your photos of Waveland and have them scanned and add them to our collection. Uh, when I was in library school many years ago, 15, 16 years ago, I had the first historical photograph project in the state when I was at the Picayune Library and we did something very similar, and it was wonderful. We found photos that we never dreamed that people had. So uh, this is a special night, and we welcome you. And uh, we asked Dr. Bill Badford to do the program because he has a lot of memories of Waveland, and he may have some other folks who are sharing things, too. So take it away. So anyway, uh, we'll get started. Waveland is the smallest incorporated area on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Anyway, uh, it's the biggest little town in the world, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> anyway, you do not have any commercial uh, areas on the beachfront in Waveland. This is something, it's an ordinance. Anyway, Waveland faces east. It has a morning sun and it's the evening uh, shade. So anyway, uh, I'd like to thank my family as far as my son helped me uh, and uh, you know, my wife helped me with computers. I'm very illiterate about computers. <laughs> so, these are my bridge, uh, my bridge as far as my uh, dream. This is Waveland Avenue train station. So, anyway, it winds up being that Waveland was incorporated as far as uh, with the train uh, area. Anyway, uh, Louise Lynch, I had hoped to have her here tonight, but anyway, she fell on the 15th of March and she broke a leg and she's mending well, uh, but anyway, she was not able to be here. Anyway, Montgomery Station was called Waveland uh, initially. It was incorporated in 1888. It had 328 people here in Waveland. Anyway, Charles Chadwick, who was uh, Louise's grandfather, he was involved with the uh, train and he drove the last fight over by Lake Catherine you know, uh, it took only 20 months, 20 months for Mobile to New Orleans to be completed. So anyway, uh, they did complete it, except that they did have shipworm, you know, which was something that it affected the pilots. So anyway, they had to create a queer sewing plant in order to uh, keep that uh, ship warm. Now this is a way that I remember growing up. As far as they used to always have the mail. I don't know, Walter, when you were postmaster, they were still hanging up and, and the train came through and they would catch it on a hook. So very, uh, very amazing. Anyway, it was Last time I used the train was going to the New Orleans Exposition 
Anyway, uh, I'm glad to hear that Biloxi is talking in terms of having a passenger train. Anyway, Nicholson <coughs> Avenue, they had three stops in the 1950s. You had Nicholson, you had Coleman, and then you had Waveland Avenue. Anyway, I cannot help thinking of the uh, railroad derailment. I had to think to myself, when did it occur, before Katrina or after? It was before Katrina. I think it was around 24, you know, uh, thank goodness that they were all empty as far as, uh, you know, uh, tr uh, tra uh, the cars. The cure cars. Anyway, I've had two strokes, and sometimes if I forget a name or a uh, memory, I hope that you will gently uh, redirect me. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, I was 10 years old uh, at this time. I used to always think that it's good to have a fish as big as you are. Anyway, it's a shame because, you know, needlefish, lightning bugs, and pine lizards, they're all disappearing. So, I mean, I don't see. The last time I saw a pine lizard was up near uh, the Boy Scout camp up in Wiggins. Anyway, in growing up here, entertainment was lazy wide, skating, uh, fishing, tripping, floundering. The movies, we had three different movies going to in the 1950s. Went to the A&G, the Star, and the Drive-In. Anyway, Bay St. Louis uh, had a bowling alley. I think that it was only, I think, four lanes. Yeah. So, yeah. It was more than that. It was more than that? Okay, well, okay. So, anyway, uh, I used to rent a skiff at Bayou Canyon for $1.50. You know, uh, anyway, my father always did say that we used an Armstrong motor. That was, you know, uh, to go. When I was going fishing out on the Bay Bridge, there was an oil well that was created in 1956. Anyway, it was a huge wildcat oil well. It was around a quarter mile, you know, south of Highway 90 Bridge. I think that there were two of them. Does anyone ever remember? Okay, this was back in 1956. <laughs> My sister uh, called me when I was an intern over at Mobile General, and she said, Bill, I don't want to alarm you, except half of Hancock County has been blown off the map. So anyway, this was back in May of 72. Anyway, it was an explosion up at in Ingram. Uh, there were seven deaths. So, but anyway, this was a munitions factory, which I don't think that anyone really knew what was going on up at the kill. So, but anyway, uh, we'll talk about the seawall. Uh, the seawall, this month's issue of the uh, uh, Han Hancock Historical Society has, you know, about the seawall on it. It started in 1915 with Robert Jennings, you know, up in the legislature. And it wasn't until 1929. Anyway, uh, it was to protect erosion from the Beach Boulevard. Anyway, uh, we've had a pier since 1945. We've had two or three pairs. Uh, and anyway, in 1945, they used a stoplight. It would come from Easter wow. until Labor Day. Anyway, home sweet home. I was <laughs> in the military. I got in. I was a volunteer in the Navy. So anyway, the first place that they sent me was to Vietnam as a battalion surgeon. Anyway, uh, I came back. It's nice to be in a small area. So anyway, uh, the elections. You know, uh, 1942, Garfield Ladner, he won by one vote. One vote. Anyway, uh, with the newspapers, I have some copies of the Waveland Advocate. You know, uh, I'm not certain. Who was it? Oh, what year was that, Doc? Hmm? What year was that? 
This was in December of 1959 through February of 61. Yeah, Polly. Yeah. Well, I'm that. sure. Yeah. Not Polly was. Yeah. Thank you. Right? It sure was. So. But anyway, uh, the echo. Let's see. Uh, this was when I was at a, at a stance loss. Uh, we were going to have a. We were thinking that we want to be Cape Canaveral, Hancock County, Space Cycle, due here, 1961. Uh, so. When Garfield won all one vote, who did you run against? Thomas Bourgeois. So anyway, it winds up being that in, in reading, it, it seems as though Thomas was not interested in leaving. Uh, they, they almost had to use brute force to get him, get him out. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, this is where uh, Louise Lynch has she been here. She's lived through four different schools. Waveland was initially, you know, the town hall served as a public school. Anyway, he she uh, graduated in 1930. This was her uh, uncle, as far as George Hurley. As far as uh, George Hurley, he was single. He and his sisters, there were seven Hurleys uh, that lived at the Ferry Estate. Uh, well, let's say that the Hurley Estate. So, but anyway, uh, it cost. $12,500 to have this completed in 1926 to 1930. $12,500. $12, yeah, wasn't it a grammar school? Only a wasn't it a grammar school? Only one. I don't know. It was all of it. I think it was all of it, and actually they had two grades a lot of times. You know, uh, in each class. So, right. So, okay, uh, Bowman uh, Commissary. Uh, anyway, uh, they have, uh, as far as this bird. Anyway, this Omen, they used to call Omenville, down there by Nicholson Avenue. Anyway, around 1880, they used to have lots of sheep in that they would do uh, uh, blankets. blankets, shawls. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Mr. Alden used to have uh, terrapins as far as uh, he read about how in Baltimore they, they were using turtles. So he got 1,000 turtles that he used. This was Fort Nicholson. Anyway, uh, it winds up being that uh, Did you she... Call the pirate, pirate house? No, no, no. 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 Anyway, uh, she was right. Uh, she married an uh, individual who was the owner of the Ely PQU. Anyway, he died and then she married George Nicholson. He was from England. But anyway, uh, she died in 1896, two weeks after her husband came down with the flu. Is that north or south of uh, Nicholson? Right, it was right on the beach. In other words, uh, I mean, north or, you know how they call it, north beach, south beach. So mm, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. So, okay, so anyway, that was a picture of her, uh, uh, she became, <laughs> <Here you remember. laughs> anyway, she became the editor of the, uh, now, time speaking to you, uh, anyway, uh, there's a power house, uh, Anyway, we're still yeah, having, right, right, we're even still having, you know, uh, this is, this is, this year, January, you know, Pirate House revisited, but anyway, it was destroyed, it was built in 1802, anyway, uh, 
And here once again, who built the Parrot House? Uh, lots of intrigue. Anyway, uh, is Charlotte uh, going to here? No. Okay. So the anyway. underground tunnel was for real because I talked to the lady who's okay. a grandfather had. Charlotte used to visit as far as Jane, did you ever deliver it from Chadwick's train post? No. Okay, yeah. Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. You've been in it? So, in what? The in, in Paradise? Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Anyway, it was no, all Cypress. So yeah. it was all Cypress. Uh, Anyway, this was the way that it uh, looked, uh, the dining room. <laughs> so anyway, why is it being that uh, we have, uh, let's see. No, this is where a little Ray is. Right, huh? yeah. I forgot to say that, uh, anyway, the new school, <laughs> On St. Joseph, uh, it was created after Camille in Arpen in March of 1972. Anyway, the Hearts of Love was 1943. It was a colored right school, right, right down there on what well, used to be called Waveland Avenue. Back in 1959, they said, you know, we're, uh, we need to call it something different. So they call it Central Avenue instead of Railroad Avenue. Yeah. 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 So, so <laughs> anyway, in talking with Louise, uh, you know Lynch, when they brought the uh, Chadwick's training post, where Gene and brother uh, Penrose uh, is brother here. No. Okay. Anyway, when they uh, brought it, they used oxen. So in other words, that was the beast of burden. Uh, See, Gene, you used to. How many people remember the alligator and the little prince there in front of Brown Vineyard? There were three of them, supposedly. So anyway, Charlie Van Der used to play the piano. He was a coroner when I first started, you know. Uh, the, you know so, oh, anyway, uh, the, it knocked it out with Prohibition, 1920. So anyway, uh, there's three uh, magnolia markers in Waveland. Only this one is out there on Highway 90. The other two were taken down after, before Katrina, <clears throat> and they've been in storage. That's a shame, you know, because one of them is Seesaw Plantation, which is Gulf Side Assembly, and then the other one is a pirate house. Uh, so, but anyway. You know, we're going to put them back up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are they going to put them back up? They were still making wine. You're a Are they going to put them back up? We can run up to the media tell them. Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown. They're working with the bureaucrats. Where was the uh, marker that you just showed us? Where is that? That's where Lil Ray's. It's, it's all. I don't recall ever seeing that. It is. It is. A, actually, my son took that. Uh, you know, it's it's right there. Uh huh. So anyway, Sean just took that. Uh, so anyway, uh, Frederick Brown and his wife Anna they acquired this in 1867. Albert, you know, who ran the place afterwards, anyway, they were used to having wine, bread, and dancing. And if they stuffing on champagne wine was uh, very, uh, very much used. They uh, used to have what they call a tally hope. This was a cart in the wagons drawn by double teams of horses. <coughs> they would have the people go by the Pickwick, Tulane, and Clifton uh, hotels and pick people up and bring them 
here. And they did have the alligators. One of them was over a hundred years old. Uh, anyway, this is Albert, that's his son. Anyway, uh, this is 1818. There were two different uh, theaters in uh, Waveland on Nicholson. Anyway, this was 1918, it was an outdoor theater. Anyway, uh, now the one that you have, this gentleman, uh, is this one or is the other one? The other one. It's south of the track or north of the track? It's south, it's uh, north of the track, on the other side of the track is where I, I thought, I thought that this one was south of the track. No. No. Okay. I have a so in other words, no. we were talking in terms of he told me Connor's grocery and I across had across from a Connor's right, 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 right across. He has a picture of it. These be Nicholson places. They had a big sign across the road, Nicholson places. Okay. And on the other side of the road they had cannons. Okay. Cannons? Yeah. Right. It, it's a shame as far as that's my heartache as far as yeah. We survived Katrina, the two cannons which I had grown up with from yeah. the War of 1812 got there. ditched. Yeah, I know. So, and yeah. that's a shame. So, anyway, uh, with theaters, the Gulf, uh, Gulf Cinema, or the Gulf Theater, it was operated by Ed Hardy. His wife had died just about oh five or six years or yeah. she was in one hundred how much six one oh six so Ed Audie's uh, wife anyway it uh, caught fire anyway it was Harold Zimmerman who lost his house right next to the Gulf <coughs> Theater this was right there by uh, where was it by Billy or was it you know, I'm getting confused as far as uh, where Mer uh, Merle and Merkel used to have. Was it, wasn't that the old the hill, hill store? Or? That was the old hill store. Yeah. Andy, Andy Martin Knowledge worked as, as a, uh, a bag, a bag boy. Right. So, uh, it reminds me of charades. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, Ellis Cuevas, is the, he's not there? Okay, Ellis was telling me about, you know, how they grew up using uh, the Ruhr's groceries on Nicholson Avenue. Anyway, it burned eventually. So, uh, August or uh, uh, August was the son uh, who was operating it. But I think his daughter was, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. She used to put on things down at St. Clair that uh, <coughs> St. John said his dances. Uh, Rose Garza. That was his okay. daughter. Oh, that was yeah, his daughter? Was okay. Daughter. Oh. Let's see. winds up being that Seesaw Plantation, it was built in 1815. It was the home of Andrew Jackson Jr., the nephew and adopted son. They sold it in 1861. It burned in 1935. The people who owned it, their name was it's a French name, but it's spelt like W. It's D-E-B-L-I-E-U-X. W. So anyway, uh, well, I have one, one, one question. How come the fire department doesn't put out the fire? Because <laughs> it, did not, it, 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 it did not occur until 1948, 1949. Well, and the, you're, you're sitting next to the daughter of the first chief, yeah. first fire chief. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it says old home, so he never did live there as far as Andrew Jackson. His son lived there until 1861. 
Anyway, it uh, reminds at me in that the Gulfside Methodist Assembly, <coughs> Robert E. Jones, that had 300 acres. Anyway, uh, I asked the people down at the Methodist Church, because I'm not very familiar with a Methodist Episcopal. I don't know. They used to have uh, gospel. They would have 500 gospel singers down there. Okay, now, this is Mr. Oma, the individual who had the sheep in the woolen mill, Omensville, and he had the terrapins. Anyway, uh, the, factory. the factory. The factory was from 6th Street to Jeff Davis. Okay. It took up the whole entire block. And there's... It was four split. houses they cut out of it. Okay. Made four houses. And they only two, have two now? They only have two now. The, the John Harlock's old house and uh, the lady who lives there. Joanne Mommy. Okay. So anyway, uh, it closed around late 1895, uh, 96 era. They, my father said that he went and looked in that place one time. And they, they were always talking about the guy that had lost his hand on one of the uh, belts. Right. And they had his glove hanging up there. And he said they used to always look in and, you know, get scared. <laughs> 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 and they usually do that. Well, yeah. come on. It's, it's interesting as far as they have ULL and then everyone else yeah. had it. Uh, oh, that type of. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Joseph Caro. I remember Joe Carroll who lived there on Bourgeois Street in St. Uh, 1875, you remember the <laughs> 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 This was before Wayland became uh, incorporated. This was 1888 that Wayland became incorporated. Except Joe Carroll lived there you know, back in the 1950s and 1960s, right there. Wasn't there a lady with the same name, Carrier, or something like that? I'm not certain. I'm not certain. Very good. Very good. First one, uh, John, uh, as far as Fairchild, that was before he was incorporated. Uh, Mr. Ullman was the treasurer. Okay, anyway, uh, Ullman Avenue is named after this individual. He served in the Confederacy, he was a captain. Anyway, he died over at the old soldier's home, over at Beauvoir. Anyway, 1926. But anyway, he donated uh, the uh, property for where the school and the, you know, uh, town hall was. Anyway, this was in the early 1894. Anyway, it burned. Is that snow in the ground? No, or sand? No, no, I think that's sand. Okay. <laughs> 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 a public school in the town hall. Now this is where Louise Lynch went to school. On that side of it's where we so anyway, this was an individual who graduated five years after. I thought it's a female, uh, but anyway, Mr. Ellison. Oh, okay. He was his oldest. They lived down Coleman Avenue, right next to the school. Miss Oda? Holy, but she the secretary. Okay. They live right down the street from the school. Anyway, uh, it winds up being that uh, I was involved in, you know, uh, Cuddy's. Uh, Sister Miss Thomas, she's here. Anyway, uh, I got a lot of the photographs, you know, from uh, this uh, Waveland School remembered. I mean, this was something that we put on and that we had a special honoree for uh, Mar Mary Margaret Turcott. So anyway, uh, let's see. Walter's sister. Okay. And Charles also. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, when John Mason, he was interested as far as 
you know, anything that's placed in the newspaper, it can be erroneous. That should be 1888, you know, sounds like it was the first one. Anyway, that was Thomas Bourgeois, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, Garfield Ladner, he served 31 years. Anyway, he died in December of 73. Thomas Bourgeois, he served 23 years. He had 12 children, 11 sons and one daughter. I knew Rose Reshaw. After her husband died, she became uh, Rose Bernard. Anyway, George Johnson was one of the daughters, and then Thelma Kingston was another daughter. Only one. Only one. But anyway, he had four sons in the military. My work for the um, water and gas. They would talk in terms of Elmwood. Elmwood Bourgeois, as far as the Memorial Park. He was last seen on the shore on D-Day, and an uh, artillery piece went off, and he was never found. Uh, so anyway, it's interesting to me that uh, his father, Ever, E-V-A-R-I-S-T-A, V. -E -A -A, Bourgeois, he had a meat pocket 50 years by Market Street. So anyway, that's where Market Street gets you. It's me. Dr. Bradford, do you have a question about Mr. Gooseball there? Is he the one that lost by one vote to my grandpa? Yeah. Yeah. And he was very reluctant as far as is he related to my grandma? She was a bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he makes the fairies look, you know, uh, they're so you don't know if he's related I'm to not this lot. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So, anyway, uh, let's see, what was, what was your question? If that bourgeois was related to my grandma. Okay. Who was your grandma? Paul Lander was, Mark Phil Lander was my grandpa. And his, his wife was Lottie Bushwalk. She's a Bushwalk. Okay. And my dad was Carl Ladner. And he had cousins, double cousins, that were Bushwalks. You would say they double cousins. Yes. Yeah. I always had a hard time getting that out of that first. Lottie was a Bushwalk that married the Ladner. And Tom's wife was a Ladner who married a Bushwalk. <laughs> <laughs> so were they were. Was it Ed Edgar? Yeah, just about Ed. Okay, Ed Edgar, you know. Edgar and Albert. So, let's see. Uh, this is the way that uh, I'm. That's how I am. She wanted to say something. Yes, go on. Sorry, we've been talking about the Morgan Street. The Morgan Street. That's what we're going to do. I'm not even going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Tom's Alley. Tom's Alley. Tom's Alley. I'm sorry. Hounds out. So anyway, Hounds out. Uh, Dupre Bourgeois. I used to enjoy. JD and I were same age. And anyway, uh, William Faulkner used to come down from Oxford and he'd be typing things, uh, you know, down there. Anyway, uh, Duke Ray would tell me that it would, it would 
they paid him two dollars and fifty cents to uh, give a wagon load of oyster shells to make what they used to call Front Street, which is Beach Boulevard. But anyway, it's it's interesting. Anyway, uh, Connie Hurley was the first Viola pharmacist there. Anyway, uh, it was raised, according to Louise, back in the 1940s, uh, uh, late 40s. Anyway, uh, this is it. So, anyway, uh, for two, two, different, two different individuals, or two different sessions, I had to look through uh, the uh, microfilm of the newspapers. <coughs> anyway, the trading goes used to be uh, 24, 294W. That was their phone number. <coughs> Nowadays, they don't even have the faintest idea what a party line was. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I told you about how Duque, you know, was paid $2.50 uh, for a wagon load. Anyway, uh, Municipal Pier uh, was in 1945. The Holy Cross Boys Camp was in 1908. The Dillman Center was in 1927. Anyway, uh, the Dillman Center, when I was taking German, Herr Winkelmann, I was always intrigued. I used to always get off. He was a Nazi soldier, you know, on the Eastern Front. But, you know, quite frequently in Vietnam, I think back of, you know, how I'd be talking on, you know, to Harold Winkelmann. His wife was a pharmacist uh, from over in Germany. But anyway, uh, there, uh, let's see. <coughs> This was, uh, you know, the Katrina crud. This was uh, uh, 23 years ago. My wife and I told Father Manning, Father Sean Manning, who my son is named after, when he blessed this pier. So anyway, uh, it used to be the way that this. I, let's see. Uh, Jack, two meters? Yeah. 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 Uh, Lester Havity owned uh, the restaurant in the IGA. Anyway, uh, the Wayland Library opened in 1972. It was up on uh, uh, Town Hall. Anyway, uh, the new library opened in 1967, which was uh, on the south side of the Civic Center. Let's see, our shopping center, that opened in 1974. There were 17 uh, businesses there. Walter Scrimshaw, uh, he uh, had a remodeling and he opened up a dairy freeze in 1953. Oh, Rito's. Yeah. So, Bill Rito's, uh -huh. uh, Groceries, you know, where, what was Sydney's, uh, Sydney Bourgeois' uh, grocery store on Waveland Avenue? Right, on Waveland. It's right there. It's right there. No, no, they, what, what, what was it called? Waveland Grocery. Okay, sounds good enough. So in other words, <laughs> we had Chadwick's Grocery, we had Connors. Connors, uh, Mr. Dockham lived upstairs. Yeah. Whenever anyone had to learn Latin. Yeah, by the track. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Part. I remember that. Yeah, learn Latin. Anyway, uh, 
the Guinness Book of Records, it was broken by Waveland individuals. Uh, and he waved Mildred Means and Pete Chapman for over three hours and 20 minutes. They, all that play continuous uh, carols, uh, you know, at Christmas time. So everyone was singing. Anyway, uh, this was the way that I remember growing up. They used to take the students and walk them down, you know, to the town hall, and that would be the lunchroom. What was the name of the barbershop when you were there? Chris 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 Anyway, it winds up being in 1947. That was $10 a month that he released it. Anyway, uh, Clint, uh, Chris uh, Ladner in his uh, barber shop, I saw it with uh, George Day at Day's Frontier. Yeah. So in other words, I, you know, I, probably it's still there, you know. Uh, but anyway, I had such historical, you know, thinking how many thousands of children. Norman Penrose, he was a motorcycle policeman from uh, June to August in 1933. Can you imagine, you know, uh, Norman Penrose being on a motorcycle? He was a lot younger in those days. What? People living in that boat going across the train. The mural on the city hall. Uh, anyway, <laughs> from. The thing that you have written as far as Beverly, as far as, I did not know that uh, Emilio Carrera, he donated $1,000 for the beginning of St. Clair. Anyway, they had 175 people coming there. I'll have to ask for the cutty because all the times they always have an I. Maybe that's the way that they spell it over in Ireland. You know, but anyway, in 1905, they doubled its size. Anyway, 1938 uh, was another uh, addition. It was 1919 when Father Costello came. Right, he came. Right. 1919. I was, I was an uh, altar boy in Jean. was an altar boy, too, in Father Costello's. His arthritis used to be so bad. For 43 years he served. Uh, he died in 1962. He was quite an athlete when he was growing up, you know, when he was in the seminary. Okay, so anyway, when it says built in early 1950s, Father Costco had this. Uh, front the front, in the bell yes, tower yeah, yeah. Well, in 1957. All the rest of the uh, area was built after Father O'Brien in yeah. uh, 1962. It was destroyed like the meal. Yeah. 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 Some well, of it was destroyed. Right. right. One, one thing is that it's, it's it. intriguing as far as uh, Paul, Miranda, and myself worked on that for over a year. It was intriguing that uh, it was not destroyed. It was not destroyed, and then you know this was uh, the memorial gift was the stained glass for Mrs. Carrere, and that survived Camille. So in other words, the stained glass was not even broken, you know, uh, in that uh, front. So. Okay, now, St. Clair. It started in September of 1964 and closed in 2006. The bound school was Sister Ruth. Anyway, uh, I saw her. She still looks good as far as at Mildred Means's, you know, uh, memorial. So anyway, the parish hall, I can still smell Dave Markey as far as the way that he would have uh, bread. It was del uh, delicious. Then you had the uh, school and then the convent. Uh, Dr. Bradford, why are you talking about the church? 
Are you talking I'm about St. Clair's Church? My grandparents got remarried right after Camille, after the church is all destroyed. Uh -huh. My dad has a picture of them standing there. It was interesting as far as that church. They redid their vows. I think it was the 50th. Uh -huh. it was, I'm not sure what the number It was pressurized. You know, the roof remained, and then the side, as far as the bricks were all going, right. just in the back there was this, the basically the altar, it wound up being and the altar, the altar was still in good shape. Wow. Okay, so he wants to hear, this was the thing of the floor of the stall, and that's another view, side of the church, Condon. Hey, look at that. Look at CK! Yay! Yay! Okay. Yeah. What is this? Yeah, got to work. Yeah. Anybody, uh... Yeah. No. Yeah. I think about it. Yeah. Lee's Lynch's drugstore was the founding of Nary's. Yeah. So, wow. so anyway, the first thing, you know, uh, this is Mary Lou's father. Anyway, you know what? Huh? You have to talk to him. You know how to do it. Well, I... I I never was interested in uh, you. But he's okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Charles Johnson's wife was clean. Yeah, yeah, I never heard of that. Anyway, uh, so Valley's was 1966. Triton uh, started in 1975. My wife always reminds me that men are much Worse and handling their finances. <laughs> so I can find my belly up. She is not your best wife. St. Patrick's Day parade started in 1964. <laughs> 1964. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Joe Griff Griffin was the first one, then Bob Lucas was the second uh, one. And then the Waveland Civic Association oh, came around in 1967. Yeah. Yeah. Donald 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 Two uh, things that went on. Oh my anyway, new no fire department in the It was named. So, anyway, it winds up being at the new department is named as far as the new annex is named for Fayard, uh, Farrell, and Newton. So, anyway, I could not help thinking to myself that all these individuals in white, I'm the only one who's still alive. Yeah, still alive. So, anyway, Lee Farrell with drownings. We had probably over 25 drownings over there right up in the air. Anyway, Lee was present at most of them using a grappling hook. Oh, wow. so, remember this? We never lost a slab, did we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did. So, but anyway, uh, man, that's an old. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now this is our new yeah. fire station. Anyway, just we were talking about Alley's uh, Alley. Anyway, uh, Jeff Davis. Billy Goat Lane, uh, because of all the number of uh, Billy Goats there. I have no idea what they're with. One thing is that I happen to have bought a book. Anyway, uh, uh, this was around 10 or 15 years old, and I had never looked at it. When I started looking at this, it winds up being that, you know, it was like the voices of the dead. You know, it was, you know, Joe Colson, he, you know, Ellen, your father presented a bouquet to President Roosevelt when his train stopped. Only 
only thing that he was he was the best dressed. You know, uh, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we have you know so many individuals. Urban Megs, uh, you know, they have uh, Jane Molaire. Uh, it was, you know. Uh, it was, uh, you know, Zelda Bourgeois, you know, uh, oh yes, I'm not, I'm not certain, I know, I know that they do have uh, Lucian Jacks, you know, uh, but it was one of these things that you only need to take the time, uh, this is the beginning, it, it was a collection of memories, not of facts, it's a portrait, you know, but in other words, they had moonshiners, millionaires, desperados, you know, uh, that they had. But anyway, this is uh, Father Cleve uh, Darling's uh, house as far as his, his niece owns it now. But it was amen as far as uh, waving forever. So, Beverly, do you all want to go ahead as far as... Uh, you and Miss Thompson, as far as talking about <coughs> the other individuals, um, I would, you know, thinking on the way here, I said it's hard for me to remember what I had for lunch yesterday, <laughs> seventeen years ago. You know, so you did a great job. Thank well, you so much. Yeah, it's you know, a lot of memories. Well. As far as a Waveland advocate, uh, uh, we do have, as far as in 1959, I was given a family Bible by the Holy Name Society. But when I look at the individual's names, you know, it just brings back lots of memories. Uh, so anyway, uh, I gave, uh, you know, this was a good friend of mine who had died back in 1961, uh, two individuals up on Hickory Creek, uh, but it's one of these things that, uh, you know, Murray, is that in the flood? Right. So anyway, uh, I would say that, thank you all for coming, and this is the latest issue of the uh, Hancock it has about rains and sheep and, you know, about, uh, you know, uh, the seawall. Anyone is interested, you know, it's, it's very informative just to write down, you know, uh, things. It does not take very long just to just make a, you know, a jotting down. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes. All right. I wanted to introduce my Aunt Rita. She moved. Please, please meet you. She came here in 1935. Okay. She made 99 April 4th. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 As far as uh, Miss Teeny, as far as, uh, you know, from up in the bay. Uh, so. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. God every day, every week, every month, every year. The Lord has planned me to be on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I heard her say more than once. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> and bring to the library, we will be pleased to have them. You may not realize it, but this library has a very unusual feature in it. You'll never see it unless you're in the back staff area. We have a huge mezzanine that's made of steel that has an attic in this building. All of our HVAC and electrical lines are way above the water line. So we have a lot of space up there that we can store.
So if you have yeah. okay. yeah. 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 so yeah. 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 yeah.